Hey, good afternoon everyone. This is Jabari Mongoose here with episode 4 of my Pokemon Randomizer Nuzlocke Challenge. Today my team consists of Furnace the Camerupt, Groot the Snover, Freebird the Staravia, uh, Tater the Cricketune, Toothless the Charmeleon, and Ellie the Swinub. We're going to be adding some more teams today because we're going to be prepping to fight Whitney in Goldenrod City. So going for my third gym badge. And this right here is where a run can be. It can, it can end. It could very well be damaged because you can lose a lot of Pokemon to Whitney's mill tank. But right now, I took care of the Pokemon quiz to get the Pokegear radio app. Two yeses, then a no, and a yes, and then another no. And that gets it taken care of. And here we start going through the gym. Again, I like challenging all the gym leaders before I have to do any extra grinding. The level cap is level 19. To be on par with Whitney's mill tank. Right now, things are going okay. The I have a strategy to take on the, will, the mill tank, and it's one I can confidently say I have never done before. One of the perks to why I like doing this randomizer so far. I hope that people are having a good day today and everyone's week is going well when this episode comes up it will be a thursday so i uh, hope everyone looks forward to the weekend get a little confused in this puzzle here a little embarrassed by it but you know it happens Decided to go ahead and have Furnace go in and just take care of all the gym leaders. He is going to be a backup in case things go wrong with my strategy to take on uh, Whitney's team. The big things to look out for with the mill tank is that it's going to be decently fast for at the level we're at. It's bulky, has a good amount of HP. It has stomp. So it has a chance to get flinches. Okay, so I finished taking care of the gym challenge. And so my team, I'm going to be leading with Staravia. And you'll also see I have Sandbag the Wobbuffet to level 19. And he is going to be the way, or she is the way I'm going to try to beat the mill tank. Basically, I'm leading with Staravia because I want to defeat... Whitney's Clefairy using U-Turn so that way I can just bring in Wobbuffet and I don't have to try to sack someone to get a safe switch onto Wobbuffet but that is also why I have Hopip or Pure Evil the Hopip in the party it's so I can use it to safely switch in into Wobbuffet if I need to so right here things are going well but then I've me predicting the potion, the super potion heal, I decided to go in for a double team. Because I'll be honest, I didn't know if the AI, the AI was going to heal or not. So I went for a double team just to be safe. I didn't want to accidentally U-turn and switch out. And I also didn't want to just go ahead for a wing attack and accidentally kill it if the, uh, if the AI wasn't going to heal. So right here, Metronome gets a charm, and this slows things down by a bit because now you can see wing attack is doing significantly da less damage unfortunately there is chances for crits here i can't play around that especially now but overall things are okay i uh, i am not liking that i've been charmed and 
the metronome just got a stockpile. So me anticipating that U-turn was not going to kill, I decided to go for a quick attack. And because of that stockpile, it just barely misses it, and I like it. And weirdly enough, we get a, we get a metronome that goes into nature power, which goes into try attack. And as you can see here, it does a lot of damage because the Glaferi got crit. But I am in the position that I want to be, so I go for a U-turn. I go, and then this allows me to bring into Wobbuffet. The Clefairy goes down, and so now Whitney brings in her Mill Tank. So the reason why I have Sandbag is because Sandbag is a female, and Mill Tank only knows physical attacking moves. So Mill Tank is not going to use Attract, and it's not going to use Milk Drink to heal. So all it's going to do is stomp. But unfortunately, I get to turn one flinch. Mill Tank uses another stomp and gets a crit. But I have the Citrus Berry. This was the Citrus Berry that Bug Catcher Wade gave to me, like after recording the first episode. But I get flinched again. So here I'm getting a little bit nervous, but I at least get another counter. And you can see it's doing over half. So I could have done Destiny Bond to predict a Milk Drink, but I decided to go for counter. And fortunately, the Milk Tank just keeps using Stomp and I don't get flinched for a second time. And the counter goes in and defeats the Mill Tank. So I was able to beat Whitney Deathless and with a Waba Fed. I can say I've never done that before. We get our badge, we get attract, and now it's uh, getting the water bottle so that way we can get the static encounter on Route 38. I believe it's 38. It's not going to be pseudo Budo, but I'm excited for it because since it's randomized by power level, I'm curious as to what kind of Pokemon it will be. So, the strategy for Miltank what originally was going to be still using Staravia to defeat the Clefairy on a U-turn. And I was actually going to go into Cricket Tune because I was going to use... I was going to have Tater use Bide. And it was still going to have the Citrus Berry. But basically I was going to do that and try to defeat Miltank, Whitney's Miltank with... By, which would be another thing I've never done before. But the thing was, Krikatoon was a male, so there was a higher risk of being attracted. But when Union Cave and I encountered the Why Not, I knew this was the Pokemon I wanted to... I knew, I, I knew that's why I wanted to use to defeat the Miltank. Because it was a female, and Wobbuffet has a lot of HP, so I figured I could use counter shenanigans. And yeah, sure enough, it worked out. Now, I did bring Tater as a secondary option if the Wobbuffet strategy didn't work. And basically, I already I predicted or calculated that I um, that Tater and Sandbag could have just died from this whole thing. But that's why I also had Pokemon like Charmeleon, uh, Staravia could have Intimidate shenanigans, and I had Camerumped, for, uh, just, you know, bulky Pokemon that could hopefully get the kill if my shenanigan strategies didn't work. But fortunately, we didn't have to go to that. So right now, this this uh, run is still going on with just one death right now. So happy to see that. And I am not afraid to fight Morty at all. Um, my strategy is uh, to defeat his Gengar is Staravia. And I'm also going to be bringing Katie to Skitty as backup. It's in the daycare right now. And basically I'm keeping it there until I'm ready to fight the gym. Because the Morty's Gengar knows Hypnosis, Mean Look, Shadow Ball, and Sucker Punch. And as long as you have a normal type that can hit, that has a move to hit ghost types and a status move, you can PP stall the Gengar of its Sucker Punches, even if it makes you fall asleep with Hypnosis. You just need to pick the status move, 
and then once it runs out of its five sucker punch uses it can't hit you at all and then you and then it's just an easy hit like you can have a completely under leveled normal type as long as it knows a status move and a move to hit ghost types you're pretty much golden so that's so Staravia and Skitty are more than enough to handle it and really it's just uh Really, it's just making sure I don't lose them to that point. Because the other ghost type trainers and some, and Morty's Gastlies and Hunters do have shenanigans. They have curse. They have mean looks. So I just have to make sure I don't. I play smart around those strategies. So right here on this route, we get our next encounter, which is a Bronzor. And this I'm actually pretty happy about. Bronzor is a very solid Pokemon. I actually used it in a Platinum run in my actual game. And I believe I, I finished that sometime last year. And it put in work. It was part of my final team against the Elite Four and Cynthia. And my awesome nicknaming skills keep happening. Because Bronzong is like a giant bell. Or at least that's what he looks like to me. I, I decided to call... Bronze or Dong. You can applaud for my amazing nickname skills. And then right here we fight against Faulkner again because literally this trainer has a Pidgey and a Pidgeotto. So. <laughs> I really don't know why they didn't give Faulkner a Knocked Owl. No natural, no trainer has one naturally until the Lighthouse. So right now I'm opting to, I'm not going through the trainers against the National Park because it really, it's just a lot of extra time that I don't need to add into a recording session. I'm going to do it afterwards and if a Pokemon I have dies to a trainer, I'll just quickly record it real quick just as proof that it happens. But I will get my encounter. Um, I wanted to get my encounter with the Sudowoodo tree first because this is going to be my Route 38 encounter, or is this Route 37? I don't know. There's there's three routes split. There's there's three routes between um, Goldenrod and Ecrateek City, and then you have the National Park. So I'll have four encounters before getting to Ecrateek and and stop and stopping here on this recording session. So my pseudo wudo encounter is a Marsh Stomp, and I am excited for this. I take a while to plan this out. So um, I love Mudkip, Marsh Stomp, and Swampert. They're my favorite starter in Generation 3. One of my favorite Pokemon just in general so this and i've been neat i've been wanting a good water type to add to the team and this is one so this here is a pretty controversial decision now that i look back on it so i switch into snowver because my thought process was i can use the snow warning to chip away at itself so i don't have to so i can avoid any accidental crits and basically i'm just going to keep chucking pokeballs until i catch it and hopefully catch it before it uh the hail just kills it and as you can see here it keeps dwindling down and i think it's because marsh Stomp is part of the starter line but they i believe they have a high catch rate i could be wrong about that but it's not getting in the ball and i believe this is like ball three or four right now so i'm getting a little nervous here and i'm starting to regret the hail stuff nope Not again. Really? So this is my last chance here. And I don't get it. 
And honestly, looking back, and you'll see from the next few encounters I get in the, in the remainder of this episode and as well in the next episode, uh, I start using Cricket Tune to help me catch because he knows decently weak moves that can help get into the red with Cut and Rock Smash, but he also knows Sing, and I'm not removing that move at this point in time. And I didn't think about it, but had I remembered or thought about the move sing, I probably would have done that, and I think I would have caught the Marsh Stomp. So, unfortunately, this kind of stuff happens. I thought the Hail strategy would be fine, because I was confident I would catch it before it killed, but it didn't happen. So my National Park encounter is a Pichu, name it Squeakers. I make a quick cut because I decided to go to Violet City to heal, and now we're on the next route. I decided to take on the, the Psychic Trainer. Cricketune has been my Psychic Trainer uh, killer because Bug Bite just one-shots any Psychic Pokemon I deal with in this game at this point. And, my, and on this route, I believe this is Route 39, I get a Wingle. So we lose one water Pokemon and we get another. Now, Wingle and Pelipper are okay, but I'm not I'm not complaining because I can make work with them. Wingle knows some solid moves, like it gets Water Spouts in the next few levels. It is a flyer. It can learn Surf, so um, I'm not complaining at this. Pelipper learns Protect naturally, and that's just a really good move in general in Nuzlocke's. Um, I'm happy about this. And looking back on this, this nickname is really, really stupid. I call it Gullwing. Gullwing the Wingle. It's going to sound better when I say Gullwing the Pelipper. But the reason why I named it Gullwing is in reference to Final Fantasy X-2. Uh, with the, the group, the main character group called the Gullwings. But when you think about it, Wingle the Gullwing, uh, I don't blame you if you think I'm just stupid. So taking care of that, we got all of our encounters this episode, and I'm now learning that Cricketoon Sing is actually pretty decent for catching Pokemon. Now we just gotta fight two more trainers, and I'll be honest, this could not be a more straightforward, easy match. You're gonna see four turns in a row. I just Wing Attack and then Dragon Rage, and that is just enough to kill uh, both of these ladies' Pokemon. And I'm okay with this free win. They're both thick, bulky Clefairy and Wigglytuff, Clefables and Wigglytuffs. So that's some good HP. I'm not going to teach Charmeleon Scary Face. I could have more utility with Smokescreen. Okay, so, oh, I actually lied. We are getting one more encounter. So here we meet Bill. Uh,. This is where I'm going to stop in terms of progressing through the story. Next episode, we'll be going through the Burn Tower and challenging Morty. But for, but before I end it, I'm going to go back to Bill and get my free Pokemon. He usually gives an Eevee, and so I'm curious what I'll get in this, in this randomizer. And you see, at first it kept throwing me off because it's like, hope you take care of this Eevee. Uh, Iron Cat received a, an Eevee, and I'm just like, I hope it's an Eevee, or I hope it's randomized, and it is. I get myself a Hitmonlee, and I decide to nickname him Sanji in honor of my favorite One Piece character. And I really, really like Hitmonlee. He's a very good attacker. Um, I... I love high jump kick and everything, so I, I can make do with this. But this is the end for, of today's episode. I hope people liked it. I hope uh, everyone liked all the encounters and me being Whitney Deathless. And next time we'll be challenging Morty, so tune in for that. Bye.